All right, what's going on guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing a Game of Thrones Q&A video for today. We're going through your guys' questions leading into the finale for Season 7, which is, of course, this Sunday night. The first question for this one is we're going to give our thoughts on how we think a Game of Thrones spin-off series will do. And this one came in from uh, Ephraim Campbell, and of course, spoiler warning as usual if you guys are not cut up for Game of Thrones. And he said, Trev, how high of the ratings do you think the Game of Thrones spinoff series will get? So really, as we're talking, basically, how do we think a Game of Thrones spinoff series will do? Now, I know it's a bit early, of course, because we still have one episode left of Season 7, and then that's going to be over, and then we'll have Season 8, which is going to be only six short uh, episodes, so uh, well, some of them might be extended, so we'll see what that looks like. But then Game of Thrones is over, and then we'll have to see what they have for us in terms of a spinoff series or companion series or prequel series, whatever they want to call it, just more Game of Thrones stuff after Game of Thrones actually does end. Um so I think that for this one, actually, Fear of the Walking Dead is a great series to look at because, of course, it was launched as a companion series to The Walking Dead. Um, and, of course, with if you look at Fear and how it performed and how it did, at first it did great. The first couple episodes, people were really interested in it. And then it lost steam pretty quickly. And by the time you got into the second season and the third season, hardly anybody was watching it, even to the point where, uh, of course, it returns for the second half of season three on September 10th. Uh, I personally am very excited for it because season three of Fear has been incredible. But at this point, very few people are actually even watching it to even give it a chance. So for Game of Thrones and their spinoff series that they have... Um I think it will do better than that comparatively at first because, of course, in that instance, you have the original series ending and then you have a spin-off series, you know, coming after that. So it's going to be a, um, you know, filling of a void, so to speak. Whereas with Fear, it was more like a companion because you have the original Walking Dead still on and then you add Fear on. In this case, Game of Thrones will be over and then you'll be kind of replacing it with a new spin-off or prequel series. As a result, I think it will do even even better than Fear did, at least to start for sure, um, because there's going to be more of a void. Game of Thrones fans are going to want to see something, so it makes perfect sense for them to do it and probably release it at about the same time as we're used to seeing Game of Thrones. I'm thinking like a late spring to early summer type of release date for the uh, Game of Thrones spinoff. We'll see if they can get it done the very next year after season eight. That would be ideal, I think. Then you wouldn't lose much momentum or steam between the finale for season eight of Game of Thrones and the premiere for a spinoff series. So I do think it can do really well. I think the first season should be should perform well either way. People are going to want it to work. People are going to want to give it a chance regardless of what it ends up being, whichever storyline they choose, if it's Duncan Egg, if it's a prequel series, if it's some kind of, of sequel series, spin-off series after the events of Game of Thrones that maybe deals with the children of some of the uh, you know uh, people in, in Game of Thrones as we might see here before the finale. If, uh, for example, you have just, who knows, this is not spoilers, but let's say you had uh, John and Daenerys get together and then you had them have a child. You know, maybe you do a, a, a fast forward quite a ways um, flash forward for the next series and then you do it when their uh, child is growing up and you get to see a lot of the different uh, you know children from different uh, houses and uh, and things like this and you do a story based on that so I think that could work I think that could be a good idea and it doesn't have to be exactly the same as a song of ice and fire this is a different universe from a song of ice and fire you do have different you know characters you have Daenerys being very strong in this near the end where a song of ice and fire we're really not sure how that's going to finish up we'll have to see but it, I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up being quite a bit different, a lot more characters, a lot more complex than the TV series version, which tends to be a lot more streamlined, as we're seeing. So uh, we'll have to see. You know, I think quality, of course, is a big thing. If it's as engaging and if it's as well written as some of Game of Thrones, maybe some of the uh, you know first few seasons or so, uh, people have been complaining lately about kind of the writing to wrap up this uh, series with this season. Uh, personally, I I felt like it's mostly on. A, a few little misses here and there, maybe are things that don't feel right here and there. But for the most part, it's been on. You know, with season six, I think. Um, so a spinoff series, I don't see any reason why it couldn't do really well and at least in the first season get great ratings and then people have to decide with season two and season three if they do that how what that's going to look like, how that's going to do. Because usually that's when you start to see a drop-off in terms of fan demand is they check it out 
then maybe they see oh, it's not as good as the original, you know, because it's you know you're comparing one season to, to seven or eight, which is always what people do. Uh, you know, I don't care about the characters as much, this kind of thing. But you haven't had you know eight years to grow with them, that kind of thing. So uh, then it starts to kind of die off. So we'll see if it's really really well done and they put enough money into it and everything like that. Then I think the franchise can go on further and you know be very uh, very successful even still. So the first season is going to make it or break it for the spinoff is really what I'm saying. If it's amazing and it's got a great hook and it gets people then they want to come back for the second season and maybe third the first season is really what's going to be the uh, the make it or break it point for a spinoff and, and i i have faith in hbo i think that they've as far as the license goes with how they've taken a song of ice and fire and turned it into game of thrones the tv series i mean they've done a really great job you know if you look at season six I'm not sure what the budget was for season seven, but I know season six was a hundred million dollars that they, uh, you know, production cost to make that season, and um, you know, definitely putting their money where their mouth is. If they put, you know, even half of that towards a Game of Thrones spinoff, it should be really good. Fifty million dollars, you can do a lot with 50, 50 mil, you know, um, and I think that uh, if they do that. There's no reason why it can't work, uh, you know, well and be maybe not as popular as Game of Thrones in its prime, but maybe somewhere close to around Game of Thrones season three or four, um, you know, or five before the ratings in Game of Thrones started to kind of skyrocket and kind of, you know, take off into over 10 million on a subscribed network, which we saw this season, which is totally unheard of, is totally crazy. So let me know what you guys think about a possible spin-off series for Game of Thrones or prequel or whatever they end up doing and how you think it's going to do. I think it has great potential. I think it can do really good because there's definitely going to be a void there after Game of Thrones ends the very next summer. So if they handle it right, I think it can do great. Uh, Jon Snow says, uh, you guys think a Daenerys uh, will ever be... <laughs> naked for the John scene. I heard rumors Amelia Clark is finished with nude scenes. And yeah, I heard that too. There's been articles about that that she doesn't want to do anymore. So I think they've done some CG and fire and stuff like that to, to do it. Um, you know, I mean, it, it doesn't matter that much. There hasn't been much nudity in the season of Game of Thrones and some people are complaining about that. Just like, uh, I think, what, like my Sunday maybe, like a couple, you know, not much compared to most seasons. But to be honest with me, like, you know, that's, that's fun to see, whatever. But Game of Thrones is such an amazing series. Uh, people often get hung up on that. It's kind of like a, I don't want to say it's like a, a shock value type thing. It's like a different form of kind of fan service or that's kind of a hook in and of itself, right, to do something like that because you don't see that in almost any shows and, get, and HBO is able to do that. So it's kind of cool that they can do that for sure. But to be honest, I mean, at this point, you know, I, I really don't care if they do it anymore. Game of Thrones is such an amazing series, even aside from that. Even if they didn't do that, Game of Thrones is still an incredible series. And, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like that's a bit... Well, can I say it's overrated? Well, I don't really want to say that, but <laughs> you guys know what I'm saying. Like, there's so much more else about it, too. If they don't do that, that's fine. I don't really care, but I'm sure a lot of, a lot of guys want to see that. Um, or girls for, for John or whatever. You know, it's cool. Uh, reset button says, uh, to the people commenting, complaining on why Daenerys didn't kill the Night King, come on, guys. She's never seen a White Walker. I would dare you to say there was, I would dare to say there was almost 10,000 of them all around John's Avengers. It would be kind of hard to spot the king from her view. Uh, I doubt she even knows there is a king because uh, they've never mentioned it to her. So she wouldn't be looking to take out the to take the king out. Uh, it makes sense why she didn't kill him when you really think about it. And that's from uh, Reset Button. So uh, that was uh, in kind of um, uh, after the episode six where, of course, you saw the Night King and he throws the javelin and that kind of stuff. And she kind of comes in. People are questioning, why didn't she just kill him then? Um, that's uh, that's tricky. And like Reset Button said here, you know, she doesn't really know anything about her enemy. She doesn't know what she's dealing with. Really, at this point, she's just trying to get in there. She's trying to get John and the others. She's trying to rescue them and get out and then deal with it from afterwards. Uh, she's out of position. She's out of place. She's just coming in, you know, as fast as she can and trying to get them out of there. So it wasn't strategically planned or anything like that. And even if you might think that that might be easy, at the same time, too, if she had her dragons approach him or, let's say, a Drogon, the one she's riding, goes right at him, um, you know, and tries to flame him down or something, you know, he's got those javelins right there and he's got other whites with him. You know, he's going to be able to probably from dead range with how, with his accuracy with those damn things up close, uh, it might not go well. You, you have to think about that. Maybe she tries it. Maybe he throws a javelin directly at the one she's riding and kills it right in front of him. And then, you know, it's, uh, could go the opposite way. It's kind of like when Jamie's like, I got an opportunity to kill Daenerys. So I'm going to go right at him. But then there's a dragon. It's like, ah, so, <laughs> so it's kind of one of those situations where it's like, like, you can go for it, but, uh, you know, you can try to take the uh, the king, so to speak, um, 
but it can be a high risk maneuver for sure and you get yourself killed uh, or maybe one of your dragons killed uh, Dylan says so I agree with you that the uh, pacing in the last Game of Thrones episode was too quick however they did have an overnight time lapse when John and crew were stand stranded on the ice although it felt like they breezed through it in an episode I think one night should be enough to send a raven get the dragons etc and then get back there and yeah you know I'm not saying that it's not um, you know it's not enough and I hear what you're saying that they try to make it it's the way it was delivered it didn't really you know and we can watch it again we can look over it and see like okay but just the way it was kind of shot the way it was delivered to us it just didn't it didn't feel right in terms of pacing for that world we're, we're not used to that for Game of Thrones now we're used to 10 episode seasons we're used to a bit of a slower pace this season has been going with a faster pace than we're used to but um, you know to see them like that and have it happen so quickly you know, usually earlier seasons, they'd be stranded there. It might be two or three episodes. And then finally, someone would come to the rescue and that would be it. And you'd focus on other things in the meantime. But we are dealing with kind of the uh, dwindling down of the story here. We're getting close to a finale. So, um, you know, it's, it's different than the earlier seasons, I suppose, because they're trying to wrap this damn thing up. And I think also because maybe they're only doing a certain amount of episodes because of the budgetary requirements for each episode. Maybe if you look at the earlier seasons, they can do 10 episodes because a lot of those episodes don't require much in the way of budget. Nowadays, when you do dragons, when you do white walkers, when you do all the CG and you have big battles and things like this, this costs a lot of money. So maybe they looked at it like, we want to do this right. We can only do this many episodes, so we got to cram in some storylines and do stuff like this because that's how much the uh, you know a budget we have. And maybe they couldn't go for another eighth episode or something because then they have to pay all their crew for another episode. They have to do all this. And... Um, you know, maybe they just maybe they just really want to wrap it up at this point after working so hard on the series for so long, so many different countries, all the stuff they've done. You can definitely understand too that maybe they speed up the pacing a bit because they really want to, you know, wrap the series up. And, and I think that makes a lot of sense at this point after after them working so hard and for so many years. Maybe they just want to wrap this thing up. Uh, let's get to 1,000 subs for no reason, says his name. It's a good name, right? Uh, Dude, this season was the best season. Almost every single episode is hugely action-packed. This show just surprises me every season even more. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's been a great season. My favorite season might always be season six. That's because I really like uh, The Winds of Winter, and I really like Battle of the Bastards. I think for me, Battle of the Bastards might be the, the you know, the penultimate, the, the ultimate episode for me. Uh, for other people, it's Hard Home. For some people, it's Blackwater. For some people, it's they like the weddings, maybe. Red Wedding, Purple Wedding, like just very unexpected events. So there's so many great episodes from Game of Thrones, and great seasons is hard to pick. Uh, for me... I'd probably go like, you know, six, four, five, you know, and then maybe maybe seven, and then maybe some of the earlier ones. But it's it's hard to tell. We all have our favorite characters, and it's been an incredible series. So, um, you know, sad to see it end, but, it, you know, it's going to be a glorious uh, finish, and hopefully we'll see a good spinoff after. So let's wrap up the video here for today, guys. Keep sending me your questions if you want to see another one tomorrow. If you like this video, please thumb it up below. You can also share and favorite. And if you're new and you want to subscribe to the channel, you can do so. Bottom left to subscribe. That's it for this one. We'll see you guys again soon for another video. As always, it's Trev, and I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See you soon.